Hello and welcome to the Daily Lawyer Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Jana Krishnan. I am your host and the founder of the Daily Lawyer. And uh, today's podcast is yet another one in collaboration with the International Legal Alliance. So this is another episode in our T- TDL Times ILA series. And for today's episode, we have yet another wonderful ILA member whom we are going to feature today. And she is none other than uh, advocate Sandhya Vasudevan Sondi, uh, a, a real estate lawyer, a family, law, a family lawyer. When I say family lawyer, I mean matrimonial disputes and all disputes of the family court. Uh, founder of uh, SVS Legal, uh, which is a law firm based in Bombay, which is focused into real estate and family law. Sandhya is, uh, ha- has a basic law degree, that is an LB degree from Government Law College in Bombay, which is incidentally my college. And uh, she also has a master's degree in mediation and uh, dispute resolution from the Maharashtra National Law University, also in Bombay. Sandhya has been a practitioner of law for a long time, uh, is uh, an, an impaneled advocate with almost all of the big nationalized and private banks of India, advising them on their uh, title documentation and uh, other sort of loan clearance and uh, real estate issues. So I am so happy to welcome Sandhya on to the Daily Lawyer podcast. Sandhya, thank you so much for being here. Hi Sandhya, thank you so much for coming on the Daily Lawyer podcast. Uh, Thank you, Jenna. Thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure. I'm so happy to have you here and uh, I know we were discussing this before when we did meet in person but for the rest of the audience uh, if you can take everyone back to the beginning how did it start uh, from law school to where you are today how has been your law journey from law school to today okay so uh, I started let's start from before law school why did I take up law I took up law because I got enamored by the Hindi movies and I wanted to be a lawyer like that. And of course, uh, after my first year law, I still remember the first day I went to court and I was shocked and uh, to see what courts were like. But nevertheless, slowly I got interested in the subject. And it is such a captivating uh, knowledge-based education that we have though the education that we learn in law school is very different from when we practice and along the way I've just been learning and implementing and it's been a great journey so far. So we start I started off as an article clerk with a a solicitor firm and then I uh, uh, decided my uh, gave my exams but I did not complete my solicitors Thereafter, I became in-house with uh, with nearby popular and, you know, um, real estate developers. After that, I started my own practice. And when I started my practice, you start grappling as an entrepreneur. Then you start thinking differently. Till then, you didn't realize where the computer came from, where the paper is coming from, where the printers, where clients are coming from. You were just focused on law. As a a lawyer, an individual-based first-generation lawyer, I was grappling with things like where do you get your clients from? And that's when I want to use this very popular um, saying that when you really want something, the whole universe conspires to give you that. And slowly I started having my clients. I operated from my house for the first few couple of years. Uh, This also uh, helped me in taking care of my young children in those days. So I have a lot of gratitude for this profession uh, because it was, it made me evolve as a person uh, and it allowed me to have my individuality as a professional, uh, give me the uh, opportunity to be, to be financially independent taking into circumstances the changed life uh, that I had as a wife and a mother. Anything more? But this is a beautifully comprehensive answer. 
and uh, i think it's a very nice way of looking even when we met i think we were having breakfast and you said uh, i have a lot of gratitude towards the profession and that, that was the first time somebody had said this to me in this uh, context you know that it allowed me to be a professional but at my terms and i was able to balance my home life and i could give my time to my kids and so on <clears throat> and then i was you know i could grow in my profession as well uh, so it's so beautiful to hear that and it's quite inspiring for us uh, and for those even younger than me who don't have kids i already have kids and i understand uh, because my kids are young today <clears throat> so i think i i am where you were um but uh, it's also very inspiring for people like us and younger than us those younger than me to see that it it is possible you know we may not be growing at the same pace of the advertised sort of professionals but we we are going at our own pace and this profession allows for that so now that we spoke a lot about the profession it's like a beautiful segue into my next question to you which is what is uh, your area of the law and imagine you're speaking to somebody who probably doesn't know anything um about the law <clears throat> how would you explain your areas of expertise to such a person so i would say it like this i uh, i i allow a person uh, i i am you need me when i you need to buy a house so i do the due diligence i do the property documentation for them to tell you that what is this property good for you not good for you and i do this also for banks for banks i giving them a solution from one end of the spectrum where they are lending the loan to the other end of the spectrum where they are recovering if the person is not paying off the loan so this is one thing i do and i do from divorces to custody and the main thing is when i started off i as i mentioned to you i was a i was trained to be a solicitor i would work with a firm a law firm as most of us do so many of my friends were like why would you do dowry and you know, sort of divorce cases in domestic violence so i put it differently i think we need lawyers who do divorces in a very principal ethical manner i have no qualms of, of finishing off cases in uh, making a mutual consent and finishing it off as early as possible if you keep your clients in mind automatically the work will flow in so i don't look at how many uh, how many billing hours i have i just look at the work in hand and i try to complete it as soon as possible so that's what gives me satisfaction so this is one aspect and i just want to say like the other day i had a mother who since 2000 Uh, the early part of the uh, pandemic since 2020 had not spent more than four uh, you know 3 4 hours with her son she had she had access by the court's order but she had not got it because the husband refused to give by giving some reason or the other the satisfaction that i got when that mother after almost 3 years got to spend 4 hours with the child and the gratitude and the way the mother thanked me the happiness on our face is so rewarding so we do get financially we we will we are our profession is such that all none of us go hungry if we work sincerely and if we work hard and these are the small fringe benefits of being in this profession touching lives yeah touching lives and that's another way you have given a positive twist to what is otherwise thought of as a negative uh you know there's a very negative connotation around things like divorce or uh, custody and all of that because there's it's fraught with a lot of it's very adversarial in nature people are bitter and so on but i like the way you've you know not focused on that portion in your answer but just spoken about the the uh, positive parts like similarly what you did in your previous answer so i think that's a theme in in the way you answer <laughs> that's beautiful uh and now but just to sum up maybe for somebody who is maybe they, they are not very familiar with our indian legal system essentially when you you are a real estate lawyer which means that you do when when somebody says title documents essentially we mean all of the documents that uh 
talk about whether that you know the uh, it's like the birth certificate about of the property like how did it come about right um so we have you just make sure that everything is in order and that uh the so a seller who's selling it to you has is entitled to sell it to you and you're not like buying Taj Mahal or something where there's no sort of there nobody has the right to sell something like that uh and then when you do banking you help the bankers make sure that the property against which they are lending is in fact uh, a viable property to lend against because that is a security that you're getting and when it comes to family matters you handle divorces custody maintenance domestic violence unfortunately all yes. within the realm of everything within the realm of marriage right is that will that be correct yes yes that's the right thing uh, i didn't cover that part yes divorces comprises also uh, maintenance and all and also i uh, i have started i'm a i'm a mediator now and i have uh, started uh, uh, mediating and i this i feel all along we have been taught about going to courts and fighting for our rights mediation is a process where we say that we wait and listen to the other person understand their perspective why is it they are not seeing your perspective and then bringing the people lessening the gap of the differences between two people and trying to come to a resolution of some sort where it is not that only one person is giving or the other person is taking it is not that in a uh, in court we have somebody else passing judgment who knows the problem better than the two people who are in the problem and they are the ones who sit down and come to resolve their problem that's what i like about mediation and i am passionate about it and i'm taking this uh, more and more uh, in integrating that into my litigation practice yeah ma how, how is it going do you see that people especially in uh, in a field like say something like divorce uh, which is so already there as you know there's so much of hurt there's so much of bitterness do you do you see that something like mediation which involves uh, a non adversarial approach a collaborative approach do you see that uh, that translating into practice uh, mediation especially in a in a divorce sort of set, uh, set setting so when uh, when when you say in a society where somebody says my way or the highway that shows immaturity but when we say it's not it's not that my way or the highway let me hear you out that itself shows it's a matured uh, way of thinking so mediation is for a matured society it is not about grabbing something it's about waiting and understanding and coming to a resolution and accepting that there is a problem so we are not taught these things about conflict resolution and if we 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 are first speak about conflicts we have to understand we are a society where if a child asks questions they are we are told or they are told that they are uh, rude that how can you back answer so we have to first accept that everybody has a thought process everybody has to be thinking we cannot have everybody being subservient and only when you accept your children asking you questions that shows that they are thinking and then this thinking population will then become matured adults and then when you have three people there will be three people who have different ideas and opinions and we have to have the patience to listen to them and at their perspective and then collaborating and understanding okay i don't agree with you but i respect your opinion this itself translates to conflict and any kind of conflict and then we can resolve this thing. so i don't know if anyone in the audience will have this doubt but i probably just want to say this to clarify but you can also chip in if you uh, sort of you want to give this more direction um when we talk about mediation in divorce in divorce matters um it's also possible that we know sometimes uh, custody is a real issue between the parents let's say maybe mediation can help sort of calm the egos down and you know figure out a solution is that a practical application of mediation in in real life would you say yeah so basically uh, in uh, when uh, i 
did not answer you specifically with with respect to matrimonial so now i will answer you specifically with respect to matrimonial with matrimonial matters yes you're right there's a lot of ego in as well and there is a lot of uh, hurt involved emotions are very high so we have to first allow each person to speak and when they speak to understand the hurt that they have maybe the marriage won't go through but you have to make where there are children involved you to we make them understand that the divorce will go through but you will remain parents for the rest of your life and you have to bring the child bring up this child together and you have to see each other or at all times so custody matters uh, have to be done with lot of a uh, lot of care lot of tenderness and uh, yes it uh, it's 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 very rewarding but if it comes it on properly but it just drain you out and it, many people see the reason but many times they don't if ego is involved yeah yeah i see i see what you mean now coming to ila because the series is called ila dialogues so uh, and ila is international legal alliance as you and i and hopefully our audience knows how it has how did you get associated with ila uh, and what do you see as an first of all personally for you as a professional what what has ila given you and why do you continue your association with ila that's my first question the second one is from a point of view of a potential client like for the world at large who will probably want these services how is an organization like ila useful to them what is the utility of this yeah so first and foremost how did i get introduced to ila i was part of a group which had a, an ngo which had a seminar where i had the occasion of meeting jamshed mistri as you and i know how jamshed is jamshed is the calm quiet baba who, who who i recognized from school from my law school the government law college and when we both both got introduced i told him that i think we were together in college around the same time and then he spoke about his vision and mission of ila how important it is and how and why so what he had in mind was a different lawyers like me i am an independent practitioner but i have a niche area of working and uh, if somebody comes to me and asks me about i need a, a help with a taxation lawyer when there is an ila there we i just put it across there that i need a taxation lawyer and then i know because jamshed has curated it there is a certain amount of trust i have in the members uh, who are part of ila and i do not mind if that member takes up this case and we collaborate in this way helping each other and uh, giving access to different people so this is what it is that i believe in what ila is doing and it helps everybody if they go to this one forum of ila they get lawyers from different fields of law in different countries also and uh, they are all by invitation the members right so that's the advantage uh, that's true actually the second part uh, i mean i of course i agree and relate to everything that you said before because i myself i'm associated with ila but uh, when it, the second part about having trust uh, and collaborating you know finding partners to collaborate with on a particular mandate uh and then thereby being a more efficient like delivering better service to a, a potential client or litigant or whatever i think that really is the higher goal and and that is something that we were we were lacking especially as independent practitioners maybe we were a little bit like satellites uh and this is sort of helped band us all yeah, together understand. under one umbrella and luck and the curated curation aspect the invitation aspect is important here because there is some sort of checking uh, some sort of vetting process that happens at a level above us uh, but luckily we all can band together in a happy way so sandhya uh, i mean we did speak about your law journey and your association with ila and a little bit about your practice and now this is the second half of the podcast where i ask it's called 5 4 3 2 1 so ask you five of something four of something three of something and the idea is to just to just to get to know you better as a person like as sandhya and not so much as sandhya the lawyer uh, so so it's my favorite part of the podcast because i love I, i get to you know know the person better 
So to start with five uh, productivity tips. Five productivity tips as a lawyer. Not, not necessary. Like it can be if anything, it can be as a lawyer or just in your life as well. So I have this habit of writing in a book. Uh, you know, when I when I was a law student too, also I used to have these small diaries. I still have an organizer. I have to write down what I have to do because I, I'm a person who needs to see and then, you know, tick mark those ticks. So that's very important for me. I, it matters a lot that I get this done. Uh, I, I Now I've started journaling uh, from, um, I started it, I stopped it, but since 2022, I've been more regular with journaling. And uh, many a times what happens is the angst that you have, which you're carrying with you for so long, when you see it in half a page, you just realize the triviality of being angry or troubled and that's it. It's over in that half a page or one page and then it's just vented out. So I, I started journaling a lot. Then I have this habit of, uh, I mean, I start, uh, prayers is very important for me because most times people come to us with a problem. Uh, when we do, when I do property documentation, I also do property documentation. So that's a different thing when people are buying houses and you do a document. But most times people are coming to us with problems and then we need to be in the right frame of mind. They may not be in the frame of mind to listen to you. They're just hearing you and they're repeating questions. They're, they're anguish and uh, they are repeating questions, asking you silly questions. And you have to be at all times in the right frame of mind. So that's why I pray a lot. Then I would say um, a teamwork for me, that's very important because as lawyers, we work long hours and our family balancing them, the work that we have, we have to team up with our team. We need, and my, I truly trust my team. I have now about five lawyers with me and support staff and they've been with me for many years, most of them. And they are, they matter a lot because only then we can function properly. And also I, I, I myself am to blame. Uh, many times I see myself procrastinating because we have to read so much, we have to write so much and you don't want to do that. So th then, you know, how do we do it again? You break it down into small things and then do it. So this is as lawyer, I'm giving my five points. Yeah. Yeah. But then I think this can be also applied to non-lawyers or any of us and sort of it's quite fungible that way. Uh, okay, four, I, I I want to start journaling. I think I'm quite, I, a lot of people keep telling me, I think you should try, try. I have not found the patience to sit. I have recently started uh, meditation. Uh, it's been about three months and I was a skeptic, I think a little bit, or maybe I was lazy. I don't know what, but then now that I've started, I'm quite, uh, I've, I'm actually quite a campaigner now for meditation. I've literally jumped the pole and gone to the other side uh, because it's that powerful, honestly. So I can just imagine that journaling is right up there with in the same category. Can okay. I just add one more thing? Exercise, yeah. some form of exercise. Oh, yeah. As yeah. lawyers, we need to do at yeah. least walking. It helps us. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I think all of these help in, like you rightly said, uh, recentering yourself because you start, you tend to get carried away with the stress. Scattered. Yeah. Scattered also. Yeah. That's you scattered true. and then just that collects you. Yeah. And, uh, and all the, and especially for you, if you get divorce matters or something, sometimes it's so bitter that you feel like they are literally taking your energy also with them uh, while they are uh, speaking. So I think it's really important. Um, Okay, four books that you would recommend. So, you know, off late, uh, I have started reading the Bhagavad Gita by different authors. And I first started with, uh, you know, some hi-fi author and I couldn't understand it. So I went and found a very nice uh, Gita by Gita for Kids. And I read that. That was fabulous. And I did another yeah, Gita. Gita Pai, no, Rupa, Rupa, Rupa Pai. Pai. Yeah. yeah, she also yeah. turned out and I realized that she resonated what she then I realized I knew her as a friend mm -hmm. and I reached out to her yeah so that way you know many years back and then we reconnected that was good then I read Devnath Patnaik so that's one particular series different Gita's I want to continue reading that then uh, I uh, really resonated with Fountainhead 
and uh, i've read it i want to reread it again at this phase of my life that is one book from alchemist i just one particular i already mentioned this that when you really desire something the whole universe uh, conspires to give you that so that's what i learned from alchemist and um, then another one is many lives many masters realizing that uh, most people in your life you met them and you will meet them again and trying to be as gentle and you know kind as you can and uh, i guess with prayers we make sure that our devilish side is not seen does not come in front <laughs> too much lovely collection of books uh, you are i i think i told you this when we spoke offline that you are the first guest to have mentioned fountain head and you know when at least when i was uh, small you know in bombay times used to get these all these celebrities used to tell the, the you had these little columns your favorite book yeah. and fountain head fountain head fountain head fountain head, like it was like the thing to say fountain head and then it just died it just it's just disappeared into ether and nobody talks about it nobody's read it and i, I was so happy when you said that because that that means i can speak about it to somebody else who has read it uh, not too many people i know have read it so uh I, i'm glad to hear that one one uh, rec- i mean all of yours but that one recommendation i would love to dis- like pick up and take more and geeta for kids i bought for my kids neither have they read it nor have i read it so it's collecting that please, read it. please yeah, read it it's collected that another book the sorry another author i read a lot is daisa krike the i practice buddhism so then i okay. read a lot of books yeah oh okay lovely yeah. Okay, three life, uh, three tips for young lawyers, uh, or law students. Three tips. Okay, so first is uh, we need to find your strength, and then focus on your strength. Then the thing is, of course, hard work. There is no shortcut to success. Please work hard. Uh, keep your morals in place, and. Um, uh, the last one would be that really read a lot you need to work hard and read a lot that's my only thing i would say to law and also another thing is you know not to give up in the first 5 years of your practice the going is tough the going is easy whatever it is wait for 5 years and only then take decisions whether you want to leave the profession change your line think and then do it because 5 years takes for you to evolve very true Uh, i'm always amazed at how the answer to this question two things are constant near constant with every single guest especially lawyer uh, lawyers who come on the podcast every single one of them will say work hard you have to read a lot uh, you know uh, it's a long career so you know don't get you know sort of carried away or depressed or with with what happens in the short term or don't look at short term gains look ahead look at your career in full and it just seems like variations of the very same answer that i get all the time and i'm always amazed and obviously if somebody asks me i'll probably say something similar uh, to what you what you what you just said so uh, i hope young lawyers and law students are taking note uh, of this because i think the generation is changing a little bit so i think they like I suppose there's a reason why every single podcast guest seems to say the same thing. Yeah. For this. Uh okay, two life lessons that you have learned in your life so far. So I um uh, this is also for lawyers and I main thing is that life is a journey. It's not a destination. So we have to enjoy. I learned it a little later in life, but I want to now cherish each moment of my life whether it is problems or whether it is success whether it is ill health whether it is just be there and enjoy that moment so it's a journey that's the most important thing and uh, not to worry so much not to worry so much uh, everything gets solved there is a problem if the problem is come there will be a solution yeah that's true that also reminds me of what you just said right like i uh, when you pour your heart out on your journal and you see listen it's just half a page it gives you a lot of perspective and then you say okay i don't need to worry this much because at the end of the day it's just this so that's true and uh, 
what is the best advice that you have ever received so the best advice that i have ever received is that you are better than that better than what you think of yourself so this is something that uh, we need to look at ourselves and uh, uh, understand that am i uh, giving myself the credit that i should give and i i am a super person i am a super power <laughs> we have to believe in it that we are we are super human beings and we can achieve whatever we want yes not just achieve in various things give everything we can do yeah. much more than what we we can yeah. or we are yeah. that's a great note to end the podcast because that's a really positive sort of confidence boosting note to end the podcast so thank you so much sandhya for giving me your time and you uh, you've had much. like such a positive um, i mean this is the fourth time i'm using this word positive because every answer of yours had something you know something good you were not ever focusing on the bad part and i really uh, i'm really inspired by that so next time i'm going to answer something i'm going to try my best to see how i can turn it to uh, to the to the brighter side so this Thank is my you. note this is a note i would have given to my younger self to be more positive <laughs> because oh. i don't think i was so positive earlier okay so i'm now <laughs> yeah so i'm taking your note and applying it to my life thank Please. you <laughs> Thank you Sandhya we'll meet we'll meet each other soon but until then thank you good night thank you have a lovely much. week ahead i love the way you're so cheerful thank oh, you oh wow thank you <laughs> bye bye, bye. good night